Hey, it's Mike here, and today I wanna to react to an interview with Aggie Lal, who is a social media influencer. She has a million followers on Instagram, and she's being interviewed here by Dr. Stephen Gundry on how she's no longer vegan, and a bunch of other stuff, which we probably won't even cover, but as you know, Dr. Stephen Gundry is somebody that I've responded to. I have a whole video debunking his plant paradox claims that you know, lectins and really legumes shouldn't even be eaten. We'll cover that in a little bit later on, but mainly I just wanna focus on this vegan section. I haven't watched the video yet, but I did see that they had chapters, and so it's not super long of a section, which means this won't balloon into a 45 minute video, luckily for you. You may have noticed this is the first no longer vegan video I've done in a while, and really, there's just been way less people that I'm aware of that are even quitting a vegan diet these days. I don't know, we had just like a little blast of them, you know, a couple years ago especially, and in fact, I think looking at her background that it was a couple years ago that she quit as well. So I did a little bit of a search on her to make sure I didn't mess anything up. But as usual, I'm gonna be reacting and then probably adding more well thought out stuff later. And lightning fast here, before we get to it, I wanna mention that my new ebook, Level 5 Vegan, A Guide for Long-Term Vegans is out and it covers a bunch of things like social issues as well as ex-vegans and lessons from them, which is super relevant here and way more. And it's also in a vegan health bundle that starts today. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but it's like $8,000 worth of eBooks and lessons and stuff for $49. Anyway, let's just get to this interview. All right, so here's the interview. And I think this is really interesting because, you know, a quick look through her Instagram and stuff. It seems like it's been a couple years at least since she has quit. She's now doing like a weird, like, anti-vegan tour a little bit, but they decided to title it No Longer Vegan. When, again, looking through these chapters, it looks like the vegan topics end at around five minutes. Maybe they, they blend into other things, but you know, we've got 40 minutes of talking about random things like hormones and eating out and stuff, but you know, this is a popular subject to talk about. This is what gets some views, they think at least. Well, we know it has in the past. So let's just see what they got to say. Can you give us a quick summary of uh, what you're like? Wait, his glasses, I feel like he has similar glasses, but they've upgraded a little bit. These are the more modern country glasses. Life looked like before going into biohacking. I was a travel influencer for over a decade. I was on the road 300 days a year, a lot of gelling, about 60 countries a year. People get mad at me for my carbon footprint of trying to not fly as much as I'd like to. <laughs> and I, you know, constantly changing time zones. So my circadian rhythm completely disrupted on a daily basis. At 30 years old, I got, I didn't even know what gut was at 30, which is embarrassing, but I didn't. So my, I was forever bloated no matter what I did. My skin was like, just like painful. I had acne that was genuinely painful. My hair has been falling out in patches and I was just like, dang, I think my body's trying to tell me something. And so I decided. To okay, so we're getting the classic picture. I guess she hasn't even mentioned vegan yet, but she was saying, you know, traveling 300 days a year, not knowing about what gut health is, I guess, being bloated and then hair falling out. We'll see what else. To slow down and figure out what I can do about my health. Did you think at that time that traveling was a part of this or? I'm so working really hard, traveling all the time, not getting enough sleep, being vegan. I mean, the Here list was endless yep. and really just not. Ha also, who's shinier, her or me? I mean, I just have sunscreen on and sometimes people are like, oh, you look like you're just like smeared in, in goop. And it's like, I'm sorry, I want to want to protect my skin. Having the education to even know where to look, that was the hardest bit. You were a vegan for years. Eight years. Eight years. And... Okay, so she says he's vegan for eight years. You most of the time felt pretty terrible. Is that right? Yes. So the first six months were awesome, right? Like when I first got into the vegan diet, I was like, this is great. I feel fantastic. My goal was to lose as much weight as possible. And I did. So, you know, I thought, I'm like, cool, mission accomplished. So her goal is to lose as much weight as possible. That is actually, if you go on the Vegan Society webpage and you look at their definition, it actually says, quote, veganism is a diet designed to lose as much weight as possible. Oh, sorry, that's not what it says. It says to uh, minimize harm to animals as much as is practical or possible. Uh, not quite the same. Accomplished, I'm good. And only over time, first thing I didn't realize was a bad thing was that I was constantly hungry and nibbling and snacking. I thought it was a good- Okay, before we get into that, I just can't help but mention, and I've started to like plug my book, but this is just so relevant. 
Now, I have a little list of traits of ex-vegans here, and one of them is really just a hard focus on losing weight, which results in, of course, not eating enough calories, which leads to a lot of other issues that are not because of veganism. It's because of the you know body-related issues and sometimes eating disordered behaviors that some people, some people who go on a vegan diet bring with them, which, you know, going vegan for weight loss, uh, I think we're checking that box. Good thing, right? Like they say, have seven meals a yeah, day. That's true, yeah. yeah and have, have seven meals. Who's saying have seven meals a day? Day. Like, I'd, I'd love to know who she was listening to, because if she's listening to Stephen Gundry now, and as I saw from a quick glance at her Instagram, Dave Asprey, which, you know, was Bulletproof Diet, which I've done a response to as well, putting butter straight in your coffee. She markets herself as a biohacker now. Dave Asprey is also one. We'll touch on him in a little bit, but the people that she's following here don't seem to be very scientific. I mean, Dave Asprey has pseudoscience in the first sentence of his Wikipedia page. Uh, that's a major red flag. Anyway. Little meals, I would always have snacks and I would have breakfast in the morning and less than two hours later, I would need to have something. But I thought it was like, oh good, you know, that means that I'm gonna be skinnier and they tell me that it's a good thing. Then I just was constantly tired feeling quite anxious, like that low level anxiety of just like being on edge. Yeah, I mean, if you're not eating enough calories, your body is gonna be like pumping that cortisol and being in starvation mode and like, oh my gosh, am I gonna die here? <laughs> like, And just not feeling great in my body. So that's how it started. Obviously we know the rest, what happened after eight years. So feeling like maybe I'm not trying hard enough in this vegan thing. So I'll go even more vegan and even more raw and even less fat. Even more and raw, that even just less got fat. Even worse. So like and she literally went down a trajectory of like, you know, consuming less calories, which is not gonna be a good idea. Like if you don't have enough energy, should you eat less energy? <laughs> like that does not make sense at all. And then of course, as you go under that 2000 calorie mark, some people under that 1500 calorie mark, all of a sudden, even if you were eating a balanced diet, it's not so balanced anymore because you're not gonna be getting, you know, there's 100% of your daily value of iron in your 2000 calorie diet, all of a sudden it could go down to, you know, 75% or even 50%. And worse and worse. And that's the annoying thing that people often say like, oh, you didn't try hard enough. And I'm like, eight years is a long time to try something that isn't working, so. I think there's a distinguish between like, I'm, I'm not, I don't know how hard she actually tried, but there's a distinction between like, trying hard and then just like not trying as hard in the right way like seeking out you know the right advice you know the most you know scientifically backed health professionals out there and that is another one of my traits of ex-vegans is a resistance to work with health professionals in general and in also with plant-based health professionals i understand it can seem a little biased like oh they didn't go to like the vegan doctors of course you know you crazy vegans didn't like keep her vegan but even just going to a normal doctor and just getting a freaking blood test and seeing if there actually is something wrong to be fair we will get to her doctor experience later though it isn't very detailed you know or perhaps it's another factor in your life like are you going to be a little anxious traveling 300 days in a year i sure as heck know i would be traveling is like the one thing that makes me anxious that has been true to me maybe there are people out there that thrive on vegan diet that's amazing i just wasn't not that person yeah some of my sickest people when they come to me are okay i just want to say right now gundry literally king of anecdotes and it's always the anecdotes that serve him and serve his narrative. And this is part of the reason I wanted to respond to this is just because recently Gundry got just so politely wrecked on Dr. Mike's channel. I'd love to see Dr. Mike going from, you know, a couple years ago being sponsored by the pork board and me having to respond to that video, which he thankfully took down. And then his cholesterol was high. He switched his diet, fixed his cholesterol a lot you know, by eating more plants and working with Daniel Bellardo, who is a vegan. And they both interview him and he is just completely out there. You're saying you could eliminate all disease? Hippocrates believed it. I see well, it every I, day. I'm not no. asking Hippocrates. Uh, you no, know, I, yeah, I think. I mean, that, just think about the statement you're yeah, making. You're saying you could eliminate you can, all disease. Yeah. I mean, yeah. then well, we're in the midst that, of a profit. Why do you, and you live longer if you smoke in some of these areas. But Whoa. that's not, it's not because <laughs> if you smoke, it's in spite of in smoke. Spite. No, you're wrong. But how? You are wrong. You it's not good. We need to at least end. British smokers. Just like 
completely insane and again pseudoscientific and nutrition made simple who's a pretty level-headed guy also politely wrecked him even further explaining you know why these anecdotes are not something that you should rely on and you know because you can find pretty much an anecdote for anything he explains you know the quality of evidence scale hierarchy of evidence and all that but yeah Stephen Gundry acts like every anecdote that he has is a smoking gun -dry. oh all right, at this point, I want to remind you once again that my new ebook, Level 5 Vegan, is out, and it's part of this new vegan health bundle. Now, with 151 ebooks, presentations, courses, and more, we're talking about what is essentially a used car worth of value, $8,000 for just $49. And in particular, I'm looking forward to things like whole food, plant based, protein rich recipes, healthy desserts beautiful vegan food styling which i seriously need to get better at sustainable vegan advocacy by melanie joy which is sweet and the great north indian cookbook as well as a ton more i mean they have ella's exercise plan which is worth 100 bucks in there and this is only available for limited time so you can just click the link below and hop on that if you would like but let's just see what he says vegans and they come to me because i was a professor at loma linda university for many years and Loma Linda is a vegan slash vegetarian Adventist institution. So obviously I know a lot about that diet. And, but question and a lot of studies have come out of Loma Linda showing, you know, across the board, lower disease rates. <laughs> We're talking up to like 70% lower risk of diabetes, only ones averaging normal BMI. So many of those diseases are lower. For you, would you say that there is a massive difference between vegan and vegetarians when it comes to health? Or for you, that would be, would you put them in the same category? My problem with particularly the American vegan diet, just as a generalized statement, is that in general, they're pasta and grain and beanitarians. Oh no, beans. And if I was going to select some food categories that are really bad for your health. That's what I would select. Um, yeah, I agree. Like refined sugar is bad. I mean, he's just saying like grains and even legumes. But this is where Gundry falls so short. He thinks that they're you know because there's some lectins in these legumes, which, as I've shown in my previous video, are like virtually all cooked out anyway. Uh, yeah, legumes from this study are the number one dietary predictor of elderly survival across the world from a bunch of different cultures. And that's the food he tells you to eliminate. I'm happy that he's like actually pretty anti-meat. He straight up says that he's anti-meat in the interview on Dr. Mike, but here he is. Can you successfully be a vegan? Yeah, I joke. Also, I love how this is like supposed to be like such a you know, a gr gratuitous, generous uh, statement of like, oh yeah, I, I guess some people can do vegan. But it's really backhanded of like, oh, I don't support a vegan diet. Here's all the problems with it. I'll only talk about the problems with it. But I'm so level-headed because I say that like some people are okay doing it. For a lot of my patients that what I want them to be is a gorilla who lives in Italy. And they look <laughs> at me odd. And I, what do you mean by that? Well, I want you to eat a lot of leaves and pour olive oil on everything. And yeah. It's -a me, a harambeo. Let's -a dump -a some olive oil all over my Vespa. <laughs> and vegans in other parts of the world, I think, do much better than us because they don't concentrate on necessarily our grains grains mm. that are full of glyphosate in this yes. country. This is a large study on U.S. populations. More grains meant lower mortality. Oh my gosh. If you're concerned about glyphosate, you could literally just eat organic food. I know it's more expensive and some things, you know, are safe, you know, pesticide free and stuff. When I was a vegan, that was in 2016, where it was just the very beginning of all the vegan cheeses. So I now look, I think about it. I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, oh my God, it's vegan. It's vegan cheese. It's vegan butter. Okay. Instead of So she went vegan in 2016. So that means she'd be roughly vegan from 2016 to 2022. Interesting. Questioning. Hey, it's pure seed oils with God knows what's inside. Right. I was just like, oh, if it's vegan, it's like. See, now she's triggered by seed oils, which again, now she's probably going back to butter because she's following Dave Asprey, but large studies like this one, half a million people show that, uh, yeah, canola oil, for example, the devil seed oil is associated with lower mortality. Butter is associated with higher, and that's plus 7% per tablespoon of butter at two tablespoons of butter. 
per bulletproof coffee, which is standard. Uh, that's plus 14% mortality. Healthier for me. And, you know, now I don't have to eat butter. I was like afraid of butter, but like, no, it's vegan butter, so I'm good. You're right. I think a lot of people say, well, I'm not feeling well because I'm having a lot of fats on this vegan diet, even though they're healthy fats. And so I'll become a fat free vegan because there's folks who, you know, demonize all fats, not just. Yeah, I mean, even, you know, and again, I don't want to ever get talk badly about anyone, but I have personally tried medical medium diet that has worked for a lot of people. And one of the things he recommends is to eliminate all fat and try. Okay, she's talking about med medical medium. I, I think medical medium is like a super nice dude and all that stuff, but a lot of the things he says, again, not based in the literature, not based in science. I do believe there's a spiritual aspect as well. And with a quick look, the medical medium also has pseudoscience in the first sentence of his Wikipedia page. And get this, Gundry also has a pseudoscience warning in his overview on his Wikipedia page. Uh, is this a requirement for her to listen? Like what? So it doesn't appear that she was following any sort of vegan sources that were showing her how to just eat a more balanced diet and make sure that she's getting all of her nutrients. I don't know if that was even an issue. It just doesn't mention a blood test where she was short on anything. You right. right, and you mentioned that you visited lots of doctors. That it feels like we're being sent from one doctor to another. It's two weeks in between, and you're in this limbo forever. All right, to be fair, she said she did go to doctors, but she seemed to be just juggled by specialists for skin issues or health issues or whatever, and just didn't feel like that was a good system. She doesn't mention, oh yeah, I went in and I actually <laughs> checked some nutrient levels of this and it was low. For all we know, they did check nutrient levels. A lot of times if you go into hair issues, they will check some levels. So no, I don't know what happened there. She doesn't seem to be sharing it. Anyway, right about there, they seem to switch off a vegan diet as a subject. So I, at this point was like, I'm just gonna do a little dive on her Instagram and end around and just see what else she's saying. And I did find this video on Rumble from this guy who's like, Oh, well, you know, from studies that I've read, you know, vegan diet, again, is only good for six months. I love this like six months quote, like I'm freaking 13 years in and I'm stronger <laughs> and all that stuff than I ever was. Um, but he's saying, oh, they're, they're fine for a little bit, but then they get skinny fat. And she's like, yup, I got skinny fat. Here they are. Interesting you talk about the breakdown, how your body started to feel like it was breaking down after six months of veganism, because I've read read studies that say that you know you, you you know in the initial stages of like being a vegan you see great things happen to your body and things start to look good um you've removed it for a period of, you've removed the meat it's for a period of time your body starts to look well and then and then it starts to really dramatically reverse and you start to get what they term as like skinny fat type yeah type, yep. type look where you're looking that like was me. is that is that kind of what you experienced 100%. So I had to, of course, go on her Instagram really quickly. I hate to be like judging bodies, blah, blah, blah. But I think this just illustrates a little bit about how, you know, what she's saying, you know, it's a little touch and go with the reality of the situation, or at least how she was presenting as healthy. I mean, first of all, it's clear that she on a vegan diet had enough energy to a travel 300 days a week and build her Instagram following to at least like 850,000. I saw quoted in 2018, which is well into the period that she was vegan. So, you know, we can look and just, was she skinny fat? Uh, in this picture, uh, very much not. Like, come on. I mean, is the skinny fat in the room with us, uh, Aggie? I mean, okay, I know people have body dysmorphia and they see themselves differently, but, you know, the way that she looks, she looks amazing through this period. People would kill to have, you know, her physique. And at this point, I should say that she has also been criticized for claiming to be vegan. But, you know, clearly just eating a vegan diet, not ethically being vegan. You know, we can see pictures of her horseback riding. People say she's like got leather bags and all that stuff. So again, she didn't do veganism. She did a vegan diet, which I think also makes people a lot more likely to quit a vegan diet or quit veganism because they were never actually doing veganism. <laughs> anyway, you get the point on that. But I also have to like mention a red flag that I definitely found researching her. I'm not trying to just like drag this person. We're trying to learn from her but it is the case. There are multiple articles about, you know, she had a program a few years back. It was $500. It was seemed to be some type of like social media course. And uh, a lot of people are like, hey, this is kind of a scam. She even turned it into like a baby 
pyramid slash multi-level marketing scheme in which she had people who were doing the course do a challenge to sell the course that they are in for like a 10% affiliate uh, thing. So that's a little bit sketchy. A lot of people were like getting their money back. Now, maybe it was just a poorly executed course. People weren't happy with what they got. At best, it's that. At worst, it was just like really sketchy. <laughs> Also can't help but notice something I've seen a lot with people who quit their vegan diet, and that goes right back to my list of ex-vegan traits, and that is a new non-vegan partner. It's really hard to judge this from this Instagram account that has like a million posts, but it seems like, you know, she broke up with her previous partner, and then right around the time that she starts posting meat stuff, she's also posting with this new partner. So. You know, a lot of times you can get a lot of pressure from a new partner. They're wearing you down on stuff saying like, oh, you know, you had it, you had a zit. Maybe that was from your vegan diet. You should quit your vegan diet. This is way healthier. And I don't know if that's the case. This is completely speculation, but it seems to match up. And it's not the only time I've seen this. And I just had a couple things I wanted to mention about biohacking. She said she's a biohacker. You know, I swear like, 10% of the pictures on there are her with Dave Asprey. You know, this is someone who, again, tells you to put butter directly in your coffee. You know, one of you guys that followed this, I always mention this case, uh, commented, hey, look, my cholesterol was 440 on that diet. And then, of course, they went plant-based and it went right down to an ideal, like, 150-ish. And so this is not something you want to do for your heart. And there's a bunch of other just, like, pseudoscientific biohacking stuff. Some of it's legit absolutely legit but instead of following somebody like dave asprey you know we can look to somebody who really seems to be the king of biohacking nowadays and i have to admit i made a video on him initially a little bit skeptically but you can see me turn around in the video and that is brian johnson he's you know got millions of dollars that he's pouring into trying to reverse aging and it really is through biohacking you know and he has a team of experts he's putting a lot of money into this constantly measuring metrics measuring blood markers and all that and he eats a vegan diet. That is the conclusion that they came to through this blueprint, really biohacking project. And I like to see now, finally, he's getting comments of like, oh, you actually are looking younger because of course he was like trying to stay out of the sun and all that stuff. And everyone's saying he looks like, you know, not healthy or younger, but now I feel like he's starting to see more and more results. So I'd love following him. And just a couple more points about Aggie Lal's health situation itself. You know, these are really frustrating to look into because we're just, you know, we get such a small amount of information you know, what was she eating in a day? What was her calorie intake and things like that? We don't know, but it's just interesting looking to Instagram. I know that's just how you show yourself and it can be very fake and all that, but you know, contrasting one of these hashtag vegan eats meals that she had years back, you know, she looks happy, she looks healthy. And then we have this meal of her with like a chicken right there. And I love how people commented like, no, just for a moment of pleasure, you killed this animal. But uh, like energetic, she seemed to be fine on the vegan one. She looked like, radiant and glowing. And so it's just kind of weird. You know, I don't know if she is rewriting her own history now that she's decided to quit a vegan diet for whatever reason, or if she was just doing an incredible freaking job of hiding <laughs> how bad she was really doing and looking and feeling when she, you know, for years and years are just posting these incredible incredible looking pictures of herself where she continuously looks healthy throughout, you know, the whole time. And yeah, it's true that people can have acne flares on all sorts of diets from different reasons. And I don't know exactly what was going on with that, but you know, there's a lot of years on a vegan diet. It seems like virtually all that she didn't have these skin issues. So I don't really know what's going on there. No, she said she went to various specialists, but she was never like, oh yeah, I'm working with a nutritionist or I'm working with a dietitian. I don't think that people should feel like they have to do that. I don't think most people on a vegan diet would have to do that. It's not like some flaw of veganism. I would go further and say that your average person on a standard American diet could really use a nutritionist or dietitian. But for those times where like things are starting to go wrong, like why not just check it out? And I think she didn't probably because she wasn't ethically vegan. You know, she didn't have any other motivation besides health to stay vegan. So she thought, you know, might as well just quit. Might as well try something else. You know, and then we also have that timing with the new guy friend who obviously eats meat. And it's just frustrating because it's always looking into a black box with these things. But it's clear that the people she was trying to listen to and she is listening to, like Dave Asprey and Gundry are just like pseudoscience machines. I mean, watching that interview on Dr. Mike with Gundry just getting destroyed, you know, just throwing out these crazy anecdotes like, oh, well, in the blue zones, uh, some of the blue zones people smoked a lot. So yeah, smoking must not be unhealthy, kind of implies that and then backtracks it. And it's what Nutrition Made Simple says 
again, that he's just a good storyteller, you know, compared to somebody who's just gonna be throwing you straight up factual scientific information, it could be really appealing, oh my gosh, and then you go and buy his book, and then you get indoctrinated against literally eating legumes, which again, are probably the best food for longevity on the planet. So, you know, his scientific basis is just completely lacking. So this is a little bit frustrating. Thankfully, not a lot of people have seen it, but there, again, are lessons here. I love learning lessons from ex-vegans or ex-vegan dieters even, because there's always that little piece of information that you're like, oh, well, that's interesting. Oh, you know, you can learn this and that. But usually I do end up getting a little bit frustrated with conflicting information. Like, oh, I was straight up skinny fat on my vegan diet. And it's just like, no, you weren't. You look freaking incredible to the point which, where it probably had a lot to do with you getting to where you are with a million followers now. Like, you know, maybe you should say thank you, vegan diet. <laughs> Anyway, this has been a fun one. Let me know if you guys actually like these reaction videos. I know they have quite a bit less science in them, and you know, sometimes I'm not responding to points as perfectly as I could, but sometimes you gotta keep it fresh and organic, <laughs> which is exactly how I like to eat. Anyway, if you would like to check out my new ebook, Level 5 Vegan, A Guide for Long-Term Vegans, of course, that link will be below, and the bundle that it is in will also be below if you want to check that out. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff that helps support this channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. That's not a snap.